Yo guys, what is up? Max in our first Zenin video, and today we're going over my updated guide to Bunny. Now, with the new mods that were just added into the game, a lot of Descendants are getting massive buffs that couldn't spec into crit before. Uh, descendants that really struggled to spec into crit, like Kyle, Esimo, um, Freyna, and so many others are going and getting a bunch of extra damage from going into non-crit builds and then we've got descendants that are still going into crit like Haley and Valby and Blair and Lepic and Viesa and Bunny's kind of right in the middle ground where she can spec into crit but she also can not spec into crit and today we're breaking down new builds for her for not only the new content the 400 dungeons but also how i plan on playing her going forward for like general use and general mobbing uh, we've got a lot to talk about today a lot of math uh, and i hope you guys enjoy the video let's get right into it so the very first thing to talk about with bunny for her the 400 dungeons is her transcendent module now i had been playing bunny prior to this 400 dungeons with high voltage on basically 99.9% .9 of the time that I was playing Bunny. However, the big downside to high voltage, because it gives you cooldown, it gives you damage, it gives you range, the big downside is it limits the amount of enemies that you're able to hit. And when I was doing high voltage runs in the 400% dungeons, there's just too much mob concentration too much density that high voltage is actually very slow uh, i took off high voltage and gained two minutes i was two minutes faster on my clear time and then so if we're not going to use high voltage the question is what transcendent module are we going to use bunny's got a lot of options and i think the absolute best one for the 400 dungeons is electrical condense now electrical condense is going to do a few things for us one it's going to revert her three back to its normal big aoe ring that while it does a little bit less damage is going to hit way more enemies but the other thing that electrical condensed gives us is a large burst of damage that we can use to nuke the bosses we've got enough range this is going to hit a large aoe and while electrical condense is active we're also going to get 20 percent more sprint speed so not only is this burst damage for our fourth ability but it's also going to allow us to get more damage off with our third ability while Electrical Condense is active. So now let's go over mods. We're going to get the basic stuff out of the way. Uh, we're going to be using, uh, you can either use HP Amplification for like a little bit more HP or uh, increased HP. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to throw on increased HP. Um, then we need range mods. Uh, we're going to be using both skill expansion and maximize range. Uh, there are a lot of enemies in these dungeons. We want to make sure that we're hitting all of them. Uh, we are at a 300% max expandable range with maximized range and skill expansion. That brings us to 286. So we're 14% off of max range. If you can get range on your uh, reactor, you'd get full range. Not the biggest like deal. Uh, we're pretty good with these two mods. Next up, uh, we are going to be rocking a maximized conservation um, while... You know, you're killing a lot of enemies and a lot of enemies are dying in the mobbing section. We don't want to ever run out of our electricity during the bosses because we that's going to what's keep uh, all the ads dying around us quickly so we can get more HP from them. And also we're able to deal more damage to the bosses and it's a easier to get the electricity back from electrical condense so that we can pop this at max electricity for like 3 million, 4 million hits, which is great. Um, and then, so this is kind of the base of the build. We've got some HP, we've got some range, and we've got some skill conservation. Now we get to put on damage mods, and this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. Um, I'm, when we get to our general use, we're going to go further in depth on while we're not going to be going crit anymore on Bunny. Um, but to start us off for damage mods, we're actually going to be putting on, uh, both of the new mods. So we've got singular amplification. This is going to give us more singular power modifier, which is amazing for our third ability. And we're also going to be putting on electrical amplification, and that is going to give us a lot more electrical skill power. So we are getting a bunch more damage. And a big thing to note now is before, if we were going for like focus on electricity um, or focus on singular, we're getting a lot of damage into one pool. So, uh, for example, if we, for our next damage mod, this is where things are going to get a little bit complicated. Um, but if we were to put on focus on electric here, uh, we are going to get electric skill power plus 77%. Electric amplification 
already gives us electric skill power. Too much of something is actually bad in this game. It's not bad, but you're going to start to experience diminishing returns. We want to spread out our damage pool um, and the amount of multipliers that we have. So, for example, if I put on focus on electric right here, you'll see that I'm getting a 77% increase to this damage modifier. So that modifier is going to go up. But if we put on something like, for example, um, power increase, which is a mod that, you know, we've never really used before because never have we had this issue where all of a sudden we're getting so much modifier into one thing or so much power into one thing. Um, power increase, if we add this, you'll see that it adds a whole new multiplier for us. Um, as you can see, this is like 65% uh, where we're just getting a new multiplier for our damage. And so we're actually going to be using power increase on this build. Uh, and I want to kind of just show you real quick how that works. So let's put uh, focus on electric real quick. So this is the first test of the setup. We've got the focus on singular, focus on electric with electric amplification and singular amplification. So full damage. Uh, we're going to make sure that we max out our electricity. I've got a like Thunder Cage mod on. Um, we run around. And you'll see that we are going to start hitting for... It looks like 338718. 338718. So now we're going to take off the focus on electric and put on the power. Remember that this is going to be spreading out our damage multipliers more. So we've got more buckets of multipliers. And now when we activate this, run around, get to full electricity. Now we're hitting for 398372. 398372. So if we take our damage with our power increase versus our damage with focus, we'll see that we are getting a 17% damage increase. You can see that I was doing some tests around earlier uh, in the calculator, uh, but we're getting a 17% damage increase by using this blue mod. Um, and it's actually this power increase when we tested it uh, late earlier, because originally I was going to use Electric Master, but as you can see, Electric Master is throwing less into our new multiplier and more into a multiplier where we already have a lot of things. And so Electric Master is actually less damage than power increase. Um, and so th this is going to be our base. Uh, we can only use one battle mod. So like this coincides with this. Um, so this is now the base of our damage. We've got HP, we've got range, we've got conservation, um, and we've got a little bit of cooldown from focus on singular. Now we need our last mods. So remember that power increase gave us a new damage modifier that increases our damage by a ton even though this only says 65 and focus on electric uh, says 77. This 77 is less damage than this 65. That's very important to understand. Um, and then the next mod that we're going to be putting on is Decimator. Now, Decimator does not work very well for uh, high voltage. Uh, it's actually terrible with high voltage because high voltage just one shots things. But in the 300% or 400% dungeons, Decimator works incredibly well, uh, not only because we are dealing less damage with our three, we're gonna be hitting enemies multiple times, which plot procs electrocution. Electrocution counts as a debuff. Uh, anytime I was running around in these 400% dungeons, Decimator was stacked up all the time, but Decimator is going to give us the same kind of multiplier um, where we're getting skill power modifier versus singular is giving us skill power modifier and singular amplification is giving us singular skill power modifier. So not only is this gonna give us more damage, but it's also gonna give us another damage multiplier uh, for our damage. So Decimator works out perfectly here. The last issue that we need to solve is that our, uh, our third ability is on a 28 second cooldown and we only have 21 seconds of duration. So we're gonna just put on Nimble as our very last mod here. Nimble gives us 20 second cooldown with 21 seconds of duration. So we have a perfect loop where we're able to keep up our three all the time uh, and we never have to have it go down. Now you can technically change the, that nimble if you would like for a duration mod, skill extension. Um, skill extension is nice here because it allows you to run around with electric condensed up more often. 
Um, however, you are going to be slightly off of a perfect loop um, if you don't have cooldown or duration on your reactor. Um, and so for me personally, uh, I want to make sure that I'm always having that uh, uptime on our three. Uh, if it doesn't bother you, go duration. Duration is technically the better mod for electrical condense, uh, but for just general simplicity and a always loop, regardless of what you have on your reactor, what you have on your components, we're going to be rocking nimble fingers. And that is the 400% dungeon build. Now we can talk about our general use build. Uh, for the general use build of Bunny, I'm simplifying a little bit. I had like a, a solo build and a group build, and you can still kind of do that. The only thing that changes in solo or group, if you really want to be super specific about it, is you can swap out MP Collector for something like Energy Collection or um, uh, Mentality. Uh, Mentality also gives you some extra skill cost, and those can be nice if you're running in a group. Uh, I just kind of have simplified it now just to running Maximize Conservation, which gives me a lot of skill cost reduction and MP Collector, so that whenever I'm killing enemies, I'm getting uh, mana back. I really like this mod, uh, especially on Bunny, because she kills so many enemies so quickly. But this is the base of the build. We've got our range, we've got our HP, we've got our mana mods, and we've got our damage via power increase and focus on singular. At this point in the build, we get to make a decision uh, on if we're going crit or non-crit. And this is kind of where I want to more break down the math for it. So um, we're going to do a quick damage test to show you what my damage is without the like three mods that we could use for crit, without the three mods that we could use for like um, non-crit, uh, and kind of break down why we are going to be using what we're using. So to start us off, let's start with nothing here. Let's go to these enemies. We're going to go and hit them. And we are procking for 307k damage right now. 307006. We just round that to 307k, right? So now, let's quickly pop that into our Desmos. 307006. Now we're going to put on our electric amplification and our singular amplification. Uh, we're going to save this last mod slot for a special mod that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but let's just put on those two mods. Now let's run around. Now we are hitting for 568625. 568625. So those mods that we added, those two mods just netted us out a 85% damage increase on our damage from two mods. So now we're basically going to do the exact same thing, but with testing the damage increase from three crit mods. Now crit's a little interesting because obviously we're not going to be critting all the time. So in order to calculate that, we're going to do our crit rate times our crit damage to get our net damage increase. We have to look at our base first. So we've got 10% critical hit rate and a 1.3x or 30% more damage when we're critting. So we can quickly just plug that in. We've got a 1.3 damage increase and we're going to be doing that. 0.1% uh, or 10% of the time is going to net us a 13% increase from our base crit or 13% damage from base crit on Bunny. Obviously, we need to find out how much damage we're getting from the new mods. So we're going to take now, we're going to add our crit mods. So we're going to go for front lines. We're going to go for skill insight and we're going to go for skill concentration. Now, when we look at our multipliers, we've got skill critical hit rate is 24 and 3.64. So now we can do, um, we do 3.64 times 0.243, and that's going to net us out 88. Uh, to check the damage difference, uh, we have to make it a, like, a, we're not doing 88% of our damage, we're doing 88% more damage, so we make it 1.88 divided by 1.13 for the 13%. This is to find the difference of the damage that those three mods are getting us. And you'll see that we're getting a 66% net increase from adding those three crit mods. Um, technically, with this 0.85, we are losing this 0.13. So if we do like 0.85 minus 0.13, we get to 72. Um, so we are, with this setup, now we are getting more damage uh, with our non-crit build 
than we are getting with our crit build. And remember, the special thing about the non-crit build is we still have a leftover mod to use. Um, so we're at a 72% damage versus 66%, and we haven't even thrown in the last mod for the non-crit build. So this is where the true personalization of the build comes in. This is truly an open socket. We have the damage, we have the range, we have the health, we have the energy sustain. You can put on this anything that you'd like. If you want more HP on your bunny, if you want to run around with a 20k HP bunny, put an HP mod. If you want some defense, go for like Spear and Shield. Uh, you could go for Strong Mentality to sprint way more. Uh, it's truly up to you. Uh, genuinely, like whatever you want to use, you can do. Uh, for me personally, uh, I am going to be getting our damage to get to some pretty ludicrous amounts. Uh, so we are going to actually be putting on... Uh, as the last mod, Dangerous Ambush. Uh, dangerous Ambush for bunny, for mobbing, actually procs very often. A lot of the times you're killing enemies around corners, around walls. If you're playing with teammates, this is giving you tons of extra damage. Uh, and it's going to help you kill those tankier targets if you're just like running through them. Um, I found Dangerous Ambush to be really nice. But once again, this is a total decision up to you. Uh, in terms of damage increases, Decimator just doesn't work for high voltage. You one-shot too many things. Multi-talented is less than a 10% damage increase on this build. So multi-talented, uh, I technically wouldn't recommend running. If you're going to run something, if you wanted like a damage, I, I would actually recommend like a spear and a shield over uh, multi-talented. It's going to net you like I think it was like 2% less damage, but you get a bunch of extra defense. Um, you could go HP, but yeah, uh, for the final mod, I personally am going to be running Dangerous Ambush to just delete things. Once again, this is for general use. This isn't for like 400% dungeons. The next build that I've got for y'all is the Deathstalker Bunny build, aka the Trophy System. Now, Bunny's definitely not the best character for Deathstalker, but she actually works as a pretty good support, uh, especially with this setup that we've got. Um, now, Bunny is not like a first priority to bring into this fight. Uh, I would way rather see like Enzo's, Eugen's, Ajax's, even Kyle's, uh, because they have a ton of survivability with their shield. But the one thing that Bunny can do really well in this fight is actually keep her teammates alive. Um, she is really good at just deleting all of the skulls that come in. And Deathstalker's most deadly attack, in my opinion, is when you're standing on the plate and he launches all of these faces up into the air that split and turn into these huge toxic rings all at a time. I've seen them wipe out teams. Bunny will kill those as they're launching out of Deathstalker. They make them a non-issue. And you're just not having many issues on the plate when you've got a bunny with you uh, because you can kind of just stand on there and there's not really going to be any damage besides like the boss's normal attacks hitting you and your team, which is pretty easy to deal with. So this build is focusing on getting as much shield and as much quality of life and survivability on bunny as possible. We need just enough damage so that we can kill the ads around us and kill the skulls, uh, but we're not really trying to focus on killing the boss with our third ability we really are just going to be shooting at the boss from range don't run up close to the boss that's kind of like the number one thing that will kill you do not try to dps the boss with your three you're just going to try to stay around your teammates with your three and keep them alive and make sure that you and your teammates can fight against death stalker without having to worry about all the skulls do not try to dps the boss with your three on this build so the things that we're going to be using are overwhelming shield Overwhelming Shield fixes our HP at 1, um, but we get a increase on our shield based off of our max HP. So we're going to be using two HP mods, Stim Accelerant and Increased HP. We are going to be using Bionic Fuel, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but we can use Stim Accelerant because we don't need to use MP with Bionic Fuel. We're then going to use Focus on Electric for a little bit of power and cooldown. We've got Amplification Control and Skill Expansion for range and, more importantly, some extra shield. This isn't going to max out your range, but you don't need to be hitting things from eight years apart. You just need to be protecting you and your teammates. Uh, we've got a shield mod so that you can scale extra shield from overwhelming shield. Then we're going to be using Biosync Shield. This is a new support tech uh, mod that allows you to convert 70% of your HP recovered upon acquiring an HP orb to shield recovery. 
I know that kind of sounds weird and you would think that this might not work with one HP builds. It does. This is a pretty huge amount of shield recovery for us. And we're going to be getting it from killing all the ads while we're running around. Um, and then lastly, we got skill simplification for extra skill power modifier. We want to make sure all of those skills are dying really quickly. And lastly, perfect anti-venom, which gives us toxic resist and poison immunity. Uh, if we do get hit, we're not going to get dotted. We're not going to take any extra damage. And we're going to try to get toxic uh, resistances on our components so that we can get some extra survivability. And your goal with this build is just to run around and protect your teammates and kill the skulls. Now, you may be wondering, why the heck are you using bionic fuel when electric transition exists? Um, electric transition is something that on paper sounds good, but in testing, I just really, really did not like this mod. Um, if we put on electric transition, we are only going to be getting 0.5% of our shield recovery per meter traveled. This means you have to constantly be running and constantly sprinting away from your team just to recover your shield. And it felt like anytime that I needed to actually like you know, get shield back, I had to go sprint and I'd use an entire mana bar. And the one thing that's nice about Bionic is we don't have to spec for MP recovery. We have infinite MP. So we can use things like skill simplification, which lower our max MP. We can use things like stim accelerant, and we can always have the ability to run around and keep up our damage uh, and get things out of the way without having to worry about mana. So we eliminate mana as an issue at all. And this just didn't feel very impactful to me. Uh, and so that's why we're going to be using Bionic. For the external components for Deathstalker, you want to stack as much HP as possible, not shields. Um, and I'm not wearing any set. Uh, while the sets are cool, uh, the most important thing is getting really important uh, substats. So on your processor, you want toxic resistance and shield recovery modifier. If this had been HP at the top, that would have been ideal. Unfortunately, I didn't have these two roles on an HP processor. Um, but that is what you're looking for. Toxic res and shield recovery modifier. Shield recovery modifier increases the shield that you recover from all sources. So if we're picking up the health and that health is giving a shield, shield recovery modifier will give us more shield from that. So this is a super important role to get on your processor. On your memory, you're going to look for HP as well as uh, shield recovery in combat is kind of the most important role on this. On your sensor, um, you can use like volcanic sensors or, or uh, other sensors that have roll higher than normal values of HP. Um, I just had uh, HP recovery and max MP. That doesn't really matter. I don't think there's really anything uh, super important that we can roll on this sensor. Um, we don't care about HP. We don't care about MP. We don't care about recovery modifiers. So just grab a sensor that has the most amount of maximum HP on it uh, as you can. For example, like a Polar Knight only has 484, but a Volcanic Sensor rolls with 646. So that's why we're using this. And then my top component, I just had a power with my double HP rolls um, to get as much shield as possible. If you have everything HP rolled, like let's say you had um, a great uh, Annihilation memory with like HP stuff and you had a great Slayer with this, uh, you're going to be sitting at around 19,000 shield on Bunny for the death soccer fight i do recommend trying to prioritize getting those like shield recovery toxic resistant things a little bit more than some extra shield uh but if you've got everything good you're going to be sitting at 19,000 shield which is so freaking nice i had a lot of great feedback on the invasion dungeon build for bunny uh, so if you liked that this is the quick little update to it uh basically we're going to be swapping out um the like electric focus on electric for power increase that way we can spread out our damage pool and get electric amplification and singular amplification on the build as well as focus on singular so we're getting some cooldown we're going to be removing uh the big mods that we lost as we lose dangerous ambush so we can get more consistent damage uh, and we lost strong mentality uh for uh, if you want, you can still use this for a little bit more skill cost reduction. I run skill cost on my reactor, so I don't really have an issue with that. We're keeping maximized conservation. Uh, this gives us a 19,000 HP bunny 
that will hit like a truck. And every time you kill something, you're going to get 9% of your max HP back on a two second cooldown. Uh, this is a very, very comfy bunny build if you want to run one. For bossing with bunny, uh, it actually works out that you still go for full crit, uh, mainly because there's only so many damage mods that you can go for. We don't need like super crazy range. We don't need like a lot of things that you did, would kind of need uh, for like general play that you need on bossing. Um, and you can't go like two crit mods or four crit mods and the like electric amplification in singular because they obviously cancel out electric mods. Uh, so it, it nets out basically being that our bossing build is completely unchanged for Bunny, um, which is fine. Bunny is still like I, at this point in the game, I wouldn't really, wouldn't really recommend bossing with her. But if you really wanted to, uh, that is the build. These are the catalyst slots. If you want to copy all of the builds that I've made here. Um, I have, I believe, 14 catalysts on my bunny. It might be 15. Um, I think I only catalyzed once or twice for this update. Uh, the big things is that we needed an extra M slot. Um, so I'm pretty sure this was a new catalyst. This M slot here wasn't an M before. Um, but, you know, a lot of different changes in the builds. Not a lot of the catalysts. I think I used one, if not two, uh, for this update video. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, those are the catalyst slots. And I'm trying my hardest to not mouse over everything while I'm showing this uh, because I know that um, I got a lot of comments saying not to mouse over stuff while I'm talking. I apologize. I have crippling ADHD. It's just something I do, but I'm trying to get better at it. For the reactor, I recommend a tingling singularity reactor with, um, there's a lot of things that Bunny likes. Uh, personally, for me, I like getting skill cost and I like getting some extra damage. Um, if I had like a higher role on electric or singular, this would be great. But those are the two roles that for me, I'm looking for on my reactor for bunny guys. That's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a bit of a longer one and there was some math, um, but I wanted to explain all the reasoning behind the decisions that we're making for this build, especially for a character as important as bunny who has like, you know, I would say probably most of the player base is play time on um, and one of my favorite descendants. So you guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care. Peace.